The next question we need to consider is how does Enterprise Vault work? And what I want to go through now is the architecture of Enterprise Vault. So let's first of all consider the Enterprise Vault server. On the server, we have archiving tasks, we have a number of Windows services, and we have Microsoft Internet Information Services, IIS. One of the fundamental parts of an Enterprise Vault deployment is SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server, and that holds a number of very important SQL databases. The first is the directory database. So the Enterprise Vault directory database contains the configuration of Enterprise Vault. The configuration isn't actually stored on the Enterprise Vault server at all. It's stored within SQL. The fingerprint database contains the fingerprints or hashes of every single item that's archived by Enterprise Vault. The Vault Store database contains the metadata associated with archived items. So we don't actually store the archived items themselves within SQL, but the metadata to be able to look up where the archived item is stored. Now the archiving task will connect to the target systems, for instance Microsoft Exchange, and will find items that should be archived. When they're archived, a number of services are involved with this. So the storage service is involved with storing the items within the storage assigned in something called a vault store partition, which is nothing more than really a folder somewhere in storage. Also, the indexing service will index the text in any documents or the text of the email as well will be indexed and stored within an index location somewhere within storage. Then, of course, we have our clients, for instance, Microsoft Outlook. When Outlook opens an archived item, it initially talks to Microsoft IIS. So it opens an ASP page, which then will talk to the storage service and talk to the Vault Store database, find the item and ultimately retrieve it from the Vault Store partition. So that's a quick overview of the architecture of, uh, of Enterprise Vault. What I'm going to do now is to show you some of those Enterprise Vault components that we've talked about. So we're going to start our demonstration on the SQL Server. And I've got loaded here the SQL Server Management Studio. What I wanted to show you was the databases that I talked about in this lesson. So the first one is the directory database. There it is. Uh, and if we open that up, you'll see there are lots of tables within that uh, database. Uh, let's just open this up. So you can see all the different tables within that database. Remember the directory database contains the configuration for Enterprise Vault. Then uh, look at this database here. We have got a Vault Store Group database, which is another name for the fingerprint database. And this one here, this corporate compliance, that's actually a Vault Store database. Remember, the Vault Store database contains the metadata associated with archived items. So now I'm going to move over to my Enterprise Vault server. So this is the Enterprise Vault server. And what I want to show you first is the services that are running on an EV server. So these are the services. So we've got admin service, the overall controlling service. We've got the directory service, the service that communicates with the directory database that I've just showed you. Indexing, which obviously indexes items. Shopping is a strange one, but that's to do with retrieving multiple items. SMTP service is also a special one because this server is set up to do SMTP archiving. Storage service, obviously for storage. And the task controller service is the controlling service for all the tasks. So let's now look at the administration console. So the administration console is the main tool for administering Enterprise Vault. And the administration console talks to the directory service on an EV server, and the directory service actually talks to the directory database. So you can think about the admin console as a little window into the directory database. Remember, that is where all the configuration is stored. And it's like a hierarchy within the admin console. So right at the top is directory. We basically have one directory database for our whole Enterprise Vault deployment. Underneath that, we have a site. 
and we've got one site here. Most organisations only have one site, but the purpose of sites, nothing to do with location. It's actually to do with having a group of Enterprise Vault servers that share the same set of configuration settings at the site level. But say almost all organisations have just one site. Then underneath the sites, we have a series of uh, nodes, and we can look at these. So first of all, we've got targets. So under targets, we'll have all the servers that we're targeting for archiving. And you can see all the different types we're supporting, Exchange, Domino, File Servers, SharePoint, and SMTP. Client access, special one to do with searching and so on. Policy, so all the different policies for all the different types of archiving are under there. Enterprise Vault servers, so under here is a list of each server we've got in the environment. Uh, archives, all the different types of archives that you can have on an Enterprise Vault server. Vault store groups, which is to do with storage, I'll show you a bit more in a minute. Indexing, obviously to do with indexing. And then personal store management is actually to do with PST file ingestion. So one of the things you can do is you can ingest your PST files into an archive. So what I want to do first is just show you retention categories. So we can see that we've got three retention categories for the moment. Uh, and what I'm going to do is actually going to create a new one. So I'm going to call this legal. Specify the number of years for this retention category. So this is going to be seven years, which is it can retain items forever. And once I've created that retention category, I cannot ever delete it. Okay, I can change the properties of it. I can even change the name, retention period. I've got various other settings that I can configure, but I can't actually delete the retention category. So let's go and look at the storage setup now. So under Vault Store Groups is where we've got all the storage settings for Enterprise Vault. And there's basically a hierarchy of storage. So at the top of the hierarchy is what we call a Vault Store Group. So a Vault Store Group is nothing more than a group of Vault Stores. And for each Vault Store Group, there's a fingerprint database. So remember, the fingerprint database contains the fingerprints for every item that is archived, including all the attachments and so on. And it's how we do single instance storage. Then under a vault store group, we've got a vault store. So we've got a corporate vault store here. And inside a vault store, we have at least one vault store partition. So we've got one partition in here for the moment. And you can see the location. So it's E, Enterprise Vault Stores, and then Corporate PTN1. So let's go and have a look at that folder. So I think just more than just an ordinary folder. So E, Enterprise Vault Stores, Corporate Partition. And inside this, we've got like the year and the month day. So these are some items that have been archived recently. OK, so there's an item that has been archived. Uh, and I, archived items, I usually have this extension DVS, uh, Digital Vault Save Set. Finally, I want to show the archiving task. So under the server, we can see the services listed here and also the tasks. So these are all the tasks that are running currently on my server. So I've got tasks for exchange journaling, mailbox archiving, provisioning, client access provisioning, indexing administration task, and an SMTP archiving task. We'll look at some of these tasks in more detail when we look at the lessons specifically focusing on exchange and file system archiving and SMTP archiving. So that brings us to the end of this demonstration of the different architectural components within Enterprise Vault.